I've spent the last four years bringing AI into classrooms. I've been lucky enough to work with dozens of schools and in the next 15 minutes, I'd like to share my experiences and what I feel works well. I'm gonna focus on what I've seen work well and why I think that is. I'm not gonna talk as much about how uh, I did it, but the resources for all the lessons I'm gonna talk about are freely available online and I'll share links to where you can get them at the end. So all the lessons I'll be talking about are things that you could uh, use as well. As an engineer, I like to learn by doing and by making. There's nothing quite like making something for myself and seeing it work. That's when it really makes sense to me. That's when it clicks. And I found that works well in the classroom too. I can explain principles of AI and machine learning to a class. I can explain the theory, but when I let them make their own AI projects, that's when they get fired up. When they train their own machine learning system and see how it behaves, see what it gets right and, and what it gets wrong, when they get a chance to improve its training and see how their system changes in response. For many of them, that's when the penny drops. It stops being abstract technical jargon then. It starts being something they understand. When I start working with a the class, they often have this vision of AI being something in the future, something sci-fi. So I help the kids to make AI projects based on real world applications of AI. For example, kids can make their own smart assistant, something like Amazon's Alexa or Apple's Siri, something that's able to understand the meaning of your command and take some action in response. So I'll get them to make their own Alexa. Now they'll only train it to recognize three or, or four different commands, but it will be able to understand loads of different ways of phrasing those commands, including some that they wouldn't have thought of. Now doing that is enough for the idea to start making sense to them. Because suddenly the Alexa isn't this magic black box in the corner of the room. It's not magic, it's not the stuff of sci-fi anymore. They know how it was made because they've made a simple version for themselves. And once you've trained it to recognize three or four commands, the fact that the real thing can understand thousands of commands is just a difference of scale. The principle's the same, and now it's a principle that they can start to relate to. This works even better when it's a real world example of AI that they didn't even notice before. Getting a class to train their own recommendations engine to make personalized recommendations, that gets them to see how common an AI application this is. It gets them talking about what they think happens when they click thumbs up on a video they like or thumbs down on a video they don't. How those actions are being used to train a machine learning model that they've never even noticed before. I've got classes to train a machine learning model to recognize their handwriting. Now it's a chance to talk about handwriting recognition and optical character recognition. But when we use that to make a Postman pack game that can recognize zip codes they write on an envelope and use that to automatically sort virtual envelopes, well, suddenly it's not an abstract technical topic anymore. It's something a bit more real. It's a chance to talk about how AI is used to automate the sorting and processing of mail at huge scales. After a few projects like these, the kids' eyes start to open to how AI is all around them. We all interact with AI systems every day, often without realizing. Suddenly, AI isn't sci-fi and isn't future to them. It's here, it's now, it's today. And they start spotting AI applications all around them that they'd never even noticed before. And this gives them a different insight into how the world around them works. Understanding today is vital. It's interesting to understand where we've come from too. Artificial intelligence has been incrementally evolving and improving for decades. Showing kids early AI systems is a fun way to give them that context. Like Audrey, the first speech recognition system built in 1952, or Shoebox, the first voice control calculator in 1962. If you've got time, recreating some of these historical projects is really effective. Menace was a system designed by AI researcher Donald Mitchie in 1961 that could play noughts and crosses or, or tic-tac-toe. Its machine learning model was implemented as a collection of hundreds of small matchboxes. He trained it by putting small colored beads in the matchboxes, and the distribution of those beads was essentially the state of the system. Now, it wasn't an electronic computer, but it was absolutely a machine learning system. Now, it's possible, although a bit fiddly, to do this as an unplugged activity today. Now, alternately, kids can recreate this easily in Scratch and train their own machine learning model to play noughts and crosses, and to play it well. Either way, recreating an AI research project from nearly 60 years ago is a fun way for them to learn about where AI has come from. Sometimes the most accessible way to teach kids about AI is to not make the lesson about AI. Kids can easily make chatbots that they train to understand and answer questions about a topic. 
Now, I've worked with dozens of classes where students each made their own chatbots for geography lessons or history lessons or English lessons on whatever topic they were currently learning about. I've seen students make a chatbot Viking that you could ask questions about their boats or what they ate or what their clothes were made out of. I've seen chatbot Romans. I've seen a chatbot William Shakespeare that you could ask about his life and his plays. I've seen chatbot dinosaurs and chatbot elephants. The focus of the projects were the topics and the research that the students had to put into them. We hardly mentioned AI. But instead of making a poster or giving a presentation or writing a report, the way they got to present the research that they'd done was through training a chatbot. Now that meant they had to think about interesting questions people might ask about the topic and they had to think of a variety of ways of asking those questions and they had to do the research to find out the answers that the bot should give in response. So this wasn't AI for the sake of AI, it, rather it was a different way for them to present information in an interactive way. And this really helped to engage the whole class, not just the ones who are typically more into computers. Some of them really enjoyed preparing funny answers that their bot could give. Some enjoyed designing how their chatbot's avatars should look or animating the way that they moved. Some just liked being able to give a presentation where they could get a bot to do all the talking for them. The AI side was almost incidental. The focus was on the information that they gathered with the AI just as a way of using and presenting information. And that's a great perspective to have about AI. Another example was uh, with a class I was working with who'd been doing a series of lessons on media literacy. Now they'd been learning about how different media outlets cover the same stories in different ways. So for their last lesson, we tried an experiment to see what a machine could learn. We collected examples of front page headlines from different national newspapers, and we used that to train a machine learning model that could recognize the use of language in headlines from different papers. And then we tested it with new headlines that we hadn't shown the system before and got it to predict which newspaper each headline was from. And it worked amazingly well. The chance for the class to talk and speculate about the patterns that they thought the computer was using to make its predictions, like the, the number of words in a headline or the use of capital letters or the use of emotive language and so on, that was a great way for them to consolidate what they'd been learning themselves over the previous lessons. I've enjoyed lessons where the students have a chance to experiment with machine learning technologies. AI tools are simpler to use than ever, and if you present them as sandboxes for kids to experiment and explore in, they'll stumble upon many lessons for themselves. For example, I've done lots of projects with classes based on games, um, training an AI to be able to play a game like Pac-Man. So they'll set up their project so the machine learning model gets trained by the way they play the game. And then they'll play a couple of games and let their machine learning model have a go. And at first it will be terrible. It will run into a ghost really quickly. So they play a few more games, collect a few more training examples, and then they try again. And they see their machine learning model doing a little better, avoiding the ghosts for a little longer. Then they'll play a bunch more games, collect loads more training data, and then try again. And now they get to see their machine learning model do an amazing job at avoiding the ghost for ages. That correlation, the correlation between the amount of training data you collect and the accuracy of the machine learning model, that's something the students discover and can reason about for themselves. They pick up all sorts of lessons about the behavior of machine learning systems for themselves through their first-hand experiences, and that's so much more effective than when I just tell them about it. Often, the most effective lessons are where projects go a bit wrong at first. For example, I often help students to make games using the webcam, like rock, paper, scissors, where they train a machine learning model to recognize the shape that their hand makes in the webcam. Now there's almost always at least one student who rushes through collecting the training data, going for quantity. Now either because they're enthusiastic or they've learned that using more training data is often better. So they keep their hand still in front of the webcam. And they quickly take dozens of almost identical pictures of each hand shape. And they find that their machine learning model tends to be very, very poor at recognizing handshapes during a rock, paper, scissors game. Now, the contrast is there's almost always at least one student who does it a bit differently, uh, who takes a variety of photos. Photos of their hands in different positions, photos of their hands at different angles, some photos of their left hand, some photos of their right hand, some photos of their hand looking very big, close to the webcam, some photos of their hand looking really small, further away from the webcam. And they find that their machine learning model tends to be fantastic during the game. It's really reliable at recognizing their hand shapes. Now with a little time to test, a bit of time to compare and to reflect, what the students stumble onto is the importance of variation in training data for machine learning systems. 
I'll give another example. A couple of years ago, I ran that lesson with a class and one of my students collected a decent set of training examples for rock and scissors hand shapes. But when he was taking photos of his hands for his paper examples, it so happened that one of his friends in the class had come over to sit next to him and, and watch what he was doing. Now, because of the way the webcam was angled, his friend ended up in each of those photos. And what he didn't realize at the time was he was training the machine learning model to recognize that a picture of a hand meant rock or scissors, depending on the shape. And a picture of a hand and a person meant paper. Now, he didn't notice until he was trying out his game. But every time his teacher or I would go and stand next to him to see how he was getting on, his machine learning model was think, would think he was making a paper symbol. Now that was a complete fluke and it hasn't happened again since, but that was a fantastic lesson because what he stumbled onto by chance and shared with the rest of the class was a vital lesson about machine learning, that machine learning systems learn from patterns in the training examples we give them, but those patterns might not be the patterns that we'd noticed or even intended. If the class don't happen to stumble onto that sort of mistake, sometimes it helps to just get them to train a model badly so they can see how AI systems can go wrong. For example, get them to train a machine learning model to recognize pictures of apples and tomatoes, but make sure their training set of apple photos are all of green apples and their tomato training photos are all of red tomatoes. And then get them to see what happens when you ask the computer to recognize a photo of a red apple or a green tomato. More often than not, the computer will get that wrong. By training it with only pictures of red apples, you create a biased system, a system that has learned to expect that red fruit are always apples. As well as helping them to understand a bit about how the world around them works, these sorts of projects help give students the AI literacy needed to help them interpret and think about the sorts of media coverage we see about AI. For example, when they're testing their projects, they'll often want to make it do better. So when it gets something wrong, they instinctively go back and add the thing it got wrong to their training data, so it will do better at that the next time. That's a very common pattern in real world AI projects. Companies collect examples of the things that their machine learning systems get wrong, and they get humans to review it and add it to the training data so that their products make fewer mistakes like that in future. Now that context helps enable an informed discussion in the classroom about news stories such as recordings from Amazon Alexa devices being listened to by Amazon staff to update their training data. Now students will still be divided about whether or not they think that's right or, or appropriate, but at least they'll have the context to understand why this sort of thing happens. A couple of years ago, there was a lot of media coverage about Norman, the so-called psychopathic AI, which was described as being disturbed by being made to watch a lot of scary movies, and they demonstrated that by getting it to identify what it recognized in inkblot paintings. I've worked with students to recreate this research project in the classroom, albeit without the, the scary movie angle, training different machine learning models to be obsessed about different topics, and then seeing how that affects the answers that their machine learning systems give to a Rorschach inkblot test. By recreating that project and experimenting with it for themselves, I've seen students able to have a far more nuanced and informed discussion about what this sort of experiment tells us about AI than I saw from a lot of media at the time. The discussions that students have about projects are often as important as the projects themselves. For example, you can start by getting students to make a recommendation app, like something that recommends attractions that someone on holiday should visit based on their interest. Now, once they get that working, get them to intentionally bias their machine learning model towards one particular holiday attraction. Just by giving a lot more training examples for that one attraction than for all the others, they can start to influence their model so that it starts to prefer that option, so that it recommends it more often than it does the others. Now doing that gives you a chance to talk about training bias and ethics in AI. Now it's often a surprise to students who start out assuming that the answers a machine learning system gives are purely a factor of how good the algorithms are or how good the code is. The person who trains a machine learning system, the training examples they choose to use, that has a much bigger impact on the answers that an AI system gives. And discovering that is often a penny dropping moment for many students. After they see for themselves the impact that they can have on their tourist info app uh, and the way that they can skew the recommendations that it gives, you can talk to them about whether or not they think that's fair. You can talk to them about the responsibilities that they think people who train machine learning systems should have. You can ask them whether it would change their opinions if the app was making recommendations to doctors about medicines that they should use rather than to holiday makers about places to visit you can use their first-hand experiences at intentionally creating a biased AI system and use the insight they gain even from just discovering that that's possible 
to enable a classroom discussion about ethics in AI. There are lots of other projects you can do to enable similar sorts of discussions. Survival of the best fit is a great simulation they can use. Uh, it's about the use of AI in recruitment, uh, and it enables discussions about the implications of AI automation in major financial decisions about our lives. I think these are really important discussions to have. My objective is never to teach all the students about how to create AI because I think they all need to know how to create AI. Now it's great if some of them enjoy it and get into it because we do need to prepare the next generation of AI and machine learning developers. But we also need to prepare the next generation of managers and directors who are going to decide how to use and apply AI technologies. We need to prepare the next generation of policy makers and legislators who are going to help ensure that AI tech is used appropriately and fairly. We need to prepare our society to be able to engage in an informed debate about how AI should be used as we enter an age where increasingly AI systems are going to be responsible for, for more and more critical activities like driving the cars and trucks on our roads or helping to diagnose and treat our illnesses. So let me sum up. I found that the best way to learn about AI is by making AI projects. The first-hand experiences that students get from building with this tech is so much more effective than just telling them about it. I found that helping them to recreate simple examples of real-world AI applications helps to open their eyes to how AI is all around us. It helps to give them new insight into how the world around them works. I believe that it's useful to dispel the myth that AI is just about futuristic sci-fi robots by giving them some of the decades of history that have got us to where we are today. I've had some of my most effective lessons reaching the most students by not doing AI lessons for the sake of AI lessons, but rather integrating it with whatever topic the class is already studying. So they're introduced to AI more subtly as another way to work with information. I've loved watching students experiment for themselves with AI tech and stumble onto all sorts of lessons and insights, often with only minimal prompting and sometimes without me even trying at all. I think it's important to let students see AI projects make mistakes so they can understand that this tech is never perfect. Making their own flawed machine learning models, whether intentionally or not, is a great way to understand the limitations of the technology. I've enjoyed the chance that these projects have given me to engage in debates with students about how AI is used to help them to think critically about the sorts of stories we see in the media. And throughout all of this, I'm continually reminded that there are important lessons for all the students in our classes about AI, not just the ones who are really into coding, but ethical and societal questions for all of them, because we're all affected by this tech and how it's used. Finally, I'd like to finish with links to the resources that I've been referring to in this talk. Thank you very much for listening.